Hey guys, Joe Fane 82 here, and today I'm looking at the FSS 5.0 Darklon figure. This guy was released this year in 2017, and he's based on the vintage figure which was released in 1989 with the Evader or Darklon's Evader. Uh, as you can see, he bears a striking resemblance to the vintage figure. <clears throat> they did a good job of replicating the design and colors. And uh, let's take a closer look at the modern figure. So there is the head sculpt. I think the mask <coughs> is uh, faithfully reproduced. A very interesting design, both on this guy and the vintage figure. And it is a mask, not a helmet like his cousin Destro and uh, he's got some red eyes and this is all solid black uh, mask and down here it looks like there's some sculpting that seems like the mask is used for could be used for uh, aiding in breathing this might be like a breathing apparatus <clears throat> I'm not sure, I'm not too familiar with the character's background, so uh, if you know more details about him or the mask, let us know in the comments. Um, he's got some red eyes there, and uh, he's got green, this is a light green color, and uh, it's, you can see the texture is ribbed on his head, which continues all the way down to his shirt, which has a uh, sort of a black, light black camo pattern across it. He has a uh, strap here, with, which goes over the shoulder with some gold detail painted on, which is very nice. It comes around, and that's all it is. It's just really a, a belt over his shoulder. Um, just with the shoulder guard here. He has uh, black, I'm trying to get a focus, there we go. Uh, he's got some black uh, shoulder pads, which are very nice. Uh, black gloves with some, with a gold uh, band around the wrist. Coming down, so his arms up out of the way here so you can see he's got a belt that goes around and has a uh, sword and this is a very nicely sculpted uh, holder for the sword uh, some really crazy detail down here at the end Uh, it's gold, and the sword is solid black, which is some very minimal sculpting on the hilt there. It's got a ribbed handle. And it slides in, and it's pretty secure, pretty secure in there. Um, so as you saw in some of my other reviews, sometimes they'll give a figure a belt in addition to the sculpted on belt, which is what happened here. You can see he does have a belt, a green belt, sculpted on, but at least this one has a function. It holds the sword. And so I got some black chains coming down that hold the sword. And this will come off. Pretty, I mean, will come off if you want it to pretty easily. Just unclasp it there and it comes off. However, when you do that, it makes his waist look quite skinny, a little too skinny for me. So um, I would prefer to just keep this attached to his waist. like so. And moving down, he's got his uh, 
reddish pants with and the black light black stripes continue down and then he's got some orange boots orange thigh high boots uh, just like the vintage figure I never had the vintage figure um, so I can't really speak to that but I'm not a fan of putting the orange with the rest of this. I think that uh, putting black boots would have looked a lot better. Uh, and on this figure is interesting that the shade of orange for this section right here is different than this, or the paint finish is different. This is a matte finish with a noticeable wash over it. And down here, this is a more glossy finish with not much of a wash. So I don't know why they did that, but that's how it is. Um, from the knees down, he has uh, the gloss that you would find on the vintage figures, which mostly had, you know, that kind of glossy finish. Um, but the rest from the knees up, he's kind of a matte finish. So don't know the details on that but that's an interesting uh, thing there uh, so coming down he's got sculpted on shin guards which you would think they would paint a different color than the boots but they didn't they did paint the buckles which are black and on his left leg he's got a sculpted on holster for his gun which is the same color as his shirt a very bright green light green and I do like the flap that comes over here so the gun just doesn't it doesn't fall out at all um, and there is a small green pistol in there if I can focus on it there we go uh, this is a very thin weapon it's a little on the flimsy side but it does fit very well in the holster. And he's got this gold thing around his shin. No idea what that is. Um, and coming down, he has his boots are kind of big. They're a little larger than uh, I would expect. Um, they do have a hinge right there, or a joint, I mean. But be, the way it's sculpted, it doesn't really move too much, very slightly. Um, so it's a lot like uh, the vintage figure in that respect, in that there's not much articulation down there. Uh, since we're speaking of articulation, let's go ahead and go over that. Uh, let's see, does his head do a 360, which is always very important? Yes, it does. It does do a 360. He's got uh, standard arm articulation, does a 360. Let's see, his elbow bends almost 90 degrees, not quite. And his uh, gloves right there will do a 360 no wrist articulation so you just got the one uh, spot there where it turns and, and that's it same for both both arms coming down he's got oh he does have the uh, joint there right below the chest in the midsection slight movement that way coming down his legs go about so far apart he, oh, he does not have double jointed knees, which I was surprised at. It's been a long time since I've seen a figure, a modern figure, without double jointed knees. So, uh, another surprise there. But they bend about 90 degrees, and I already went over the ankle articulation. So, uh, as far as accessories, uh, you've already seen the sword, you've seen the pistol. He comes with a 
briefcase with which says Mars on it. He is an iron grenadier, so he works for the Mars Corporation or company that his cousin is in charge of. And this briefcase will open. It's very tight. Ugh. But it will open. It's got some uh, sculpted detail on the inside. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's got a knife and probably a uh, graphing calculator there for his math problems. And he also comes with this small silver gun, gray gun, I should say. And that fits right here in the briefcase. Whoa, <laughs> it slipped out. That's what she said. Um, so it closes very nicely, very tight. It won't open. It takes a while to get it, takes some effort to get it open. I wish that something like this had been included, had been a part of uh, Salvo's briefcase. Uh, Salvo was my last review. If you missed it, go back and watch it. Um, and he comes with this gun, which I believe is very similar to the vintage uh, figure's weapon. This is a, a great, interesting sculpt. I don't know if this has any modern, I mean, a real-world uh, equivalent. If you know the answer to that, let me know in the comments. But this look, looks pretty crazy kind of out there. Not sure what all is going on, but uh, it looks quite intimidating. And of course, the figure stand, codename Darklon. And let's take a look at the packaging. So if I can zoom up here. Uh, it's G.I. Joe Collector's Club exclusive. G.I. Joe logo, Cobra Enemy. There we go. It says Iron Grenadier Courier, codename Darklon, and we've got some very nice artwork there on the front. A very imposing looking character there. And the retro Hasbro logo. Turning around to the back, we have the same artwork, same artwork that we saw on the front. Uh, it says G.I. Joe Club exclusive series five, number six. And coming down, we have the file card. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. It says Iron Grenadier Courier, codename Darklon, file name classified, primary military specialty mercenary. Secondary military specialty, assault vehicle driver. Birthplace, Darklonia. That's convenient. Darklon is a distant cousin of the Destro clan and the last of a long line of privateers, mercenaries, and investment bankers. He looks like an investment banker. From his cast iron castle in the Alps, he dispatches his private armies to do battle for the highest bidder. He is completely unhindered by ideology or ethics and is motivated purely by greed, a trait that makes him a perfect fit for his occasional employers, the Iron Grenadiers. So he isn't a full-time Iron Grenadier employee. He's more of a freelance guy. Destro often clashes with Darklon over his cousin's sarcastic attitude and his affinity for showboating. With such a grading personality, he is only hired as an international courier or for other special missions that require his unparalleled driving skills. So kind of like the, uh, the transporter. This expertise and his uncanny ability to elude pursuers will be needed to affect his escape should his devious plans to double-cross his Mars employer succeed. So that's interesting. Uh, his devious plans to double cross his Mars employer succeed. So his own his own cousin he uh, 
doesn't care about uh, stabbing in the back. And down here, the quote says, get in my way and I'll squash you like a gnat on my windscreen. So, that, you know, that's referring, this guy was a vehicle driver uh, when he was released in the vintage line. So that's why it refers to driving in this paragraph. And then this uh, quote kind of refers to that as well. And in case you didn't know, MARS stands for Military Armament Research Systems. And we've got that same portrait here on the side. And it says Cobra, even though he's not really a, uh, affiliated directly with Cobra. So there you go. There is the packaging. And quickly, let's look at his how he holds the accessories here. The gun will not fit, or you can't really hold it too well in the right hand. It's very loose and will fall out. You're gonna wanna stick with the left hand, which he holds a little better. He's got a bit of a trigger finger sculpted on. So with some marking, you can get it in there like that. So that's that. The briefcase, it's kind of loose. I'm not going to lie, it's kind of loose. I mean, he holds it, but it's a little on the loose side. And the right hand is, the right hand is meant to hold this guy. It's a very wide grip. Can he hold it in this hand? Let's see. Inquiring minds want to know. <clears throat> he can. So, there you go. You know, and his sword. Let's take a look at that. The sword, uh, the right hand, the grip is too wide to hold the sword, I think. Oh, no, there it goes. It does, you know, eh, it's a little loose. It's a little loose. If you have it in there at the right, just like that, it kind of holds it. But if you turn it like that, it's too loose. Um, in the left hand, he holds it a little better. Oh, and before I forget, one of the most important things to look at, does the figure stand up on his own? Let's see. And he does. Amazing. If you saw my last video, you re remember that Salvo will not stand up. But Darklon does. Yay. Got a winner. So, overall, uh, this is a decent figure. Uh, if you can get past the thigh-high orange boots, um, he is a decent figure. He's got some nice accessories. It's a very distinctive look. I really like this mask. It uh, has an air of mystery to it. We don't know what's going on underneath that mask with those red eyes. Quite intimidating. Um, I like the character. I don't know anything about him, but I like him. And I do recommend picking this uh, figure up. There we go. Uh, I do recommend picking this guy up <clears throat> if you have the chance. Um, he was originally available through the Collectors Club subscription service. So on the secondary market you'll find him on eBay or other online retailers that sell G.I. Joe. So, so far this is one of the better figures of this year's FSS. Uh, so that's it for this review. Um, you can find me on social media, uh, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, there's links for that in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.